Welcome to this second tutorial video where we are learning how to make, I'm learning how to make, and hopefully you're learning how to make, a, a racing simulation for turtles using Python. Um, and I'm programming on the Trinket uh, browser website where you can put Python on the left hand side here, code that, and then on the right hand side, after you press this play button, your Python will run, which is really, really nice. So the Turtle module works on top of Tikinta, if you've heard of that, which is a, a graphics module for um, Python, and I believe it can involve some input output as well. Right, so this video, we're gonna continue using the code exactly as it was from my last video, and start getting these guys moving and racing. And so I've got to think of some kind of like game or simulation loop as well. Okay, so, to do that, you could just, I've put a link in the previous video to this code, so you could just copy and paste that into a new trinket or whatever uh, place you're coding your uh, Python, maybe you're using idle, something like that. Um, what I want to do is, I could just copy, couldn't I? Let's just copy this. So that's created a new trinket. I'm going to make my font a bit larger and let's call this Video two. I can take. Uh, I can take the copy off now. Brilliant. So now I can change this code, and I won't have to worry about messing up the previous video because that's saved in a previous trinket. Let's just go and make sure that's happened. <laughs> so I've got turtle video one. Oh, and I didn't save what I just did. So let's go back into that. Let's go back into you, and copy you again. Rename you video two. You know what that is? It's because I'm used to using like CodePen and other things like that, where things or the P5 editor, if you're using JavaScript and things, where things are saved automatically. This does not trinket does not save automatically as far as far as I know. So, Turtle video two save. Brilliant. Now I can make my font bigger again, and this time if I go back into my trinkets folder. Brilliant, I've got two. I've got turtle video one, turtle video two. Let's go to that. Right, it looks like I have to keep changing my font size. So what's happening so far? So we've got, a f we've just got one function which just sets up the starting position of each turtle. So what does it do? It makes sure their pen is up so they don't draw on the ground. Um, then they go to minus 100 on the x axis. There we go, and then the function kind of calculates 20 pixels between each new turtle that you pass into this function, and it's using the current y start position cy variable, the global one, to do that calculation. And it's as easy as doing the current y position equals the current y position minus 20. And that'll happen to that global variable, keeping track of that position every time. So we've got three turtles. We've got Edward, Felicity, and Martin. Uh, we change our screen appearance to nice and green. We change the turtles' appearances. Um, and I was talking about last video, maybe making a function to deal with that. I won't do that. I want to get them moving. So now we organise a race. So let's just um, let's do something like move our turtles forwards. And I just remember, I always forget to look at the time. It would be nice to make videos around 15 minutes, maybe a bit longer. So it's about quarter past two. So add 10 minutes to the... Well, that's about half past. Okay, I'll go to about half past or beyond if it gets interesting. Okay, so I'm going to make some lines here so I can move this to the top. Right, so to move Edward forward, we're going to get hold of our Edward turtle. And then we can say forward and then how many pixels forward so let's just say I don't know um, 20 let's see what happens so it goes to the start position and then Edward moves forward um, if we want Felicity let's go and grab your name to move forward by 23 now Felicity goes a little bit ahead brilliant okay so we could do something like um, uh, move amount. What should we call that? We'll call that delta. Delta for like a change. Delta 
equals and wouldn't we wouldn't it be good to say like a random integer so integer being a whole number between one pixel and maybe a hundred and then instead of saying 20 I can put delta in here and then maybe we'll put delta in again to felicity della delta I try and run that and it shouldn't work and it doesn't work um, Python is saying random int is not defined on line 38 so why can't we use random integer that's because it relies on another module we need to import the random module now does that work no random int is not so what we need to do we need to import all the like the functions from random so we want from random import everything so this little star this asterisk means import all the functions from the random module okay now let's see if that runs wonderful it's working so um what are their names? Edward and Felicity have moved a random amount forward, but they haven't moved different random amounts. And that's because I've only chosen like one random number and I've put that in delta. So ideally I want this to run I want this to run twice. So I could do this again. And now the delta that Felicity uses is going to be different. Yes. And Felicity wins. Well done, Felicity. You've won this time. Okay, but what's happening now is that we're getting... Uh, uh, we're wasting our code. We're kind of uh, doing something twice. So if you remember the previous video, if you're doing something at lots of times, um, coding is, is about you know finding one way to do something with, say, a function or an array so that you're saving on the typing and doing and using the computer um, to do things that it's designed to do, repetitive tasks over and over again. So let's go to the top where we usually place all our functions in our code and let's make a function to go and basically give us a random number. Um, so we, we'll call this a delta and then we want, what do we want to put in there? Maybe we just want to pass in what's the 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 maximum value we want back. So we'll call that max. Um, that's got a different color. Look, so it looks like it's gone like purple. Maybe Python is using that already as a, uh, a keyword. Let's just see if we can get away with it. Let's see if we can use it. So we're going to say return. So this function is going to return something. Um, return a random integer between one and, or maybe zero, maybe zero can be the lowest, but zero and the maximum number here. There we go. Um, and now what would be good is to explain what this function does. So return a random integer, a random number. There we go. And it should be clear that max means maximum if it works. So now we don't have to write. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to write this delta equals delta equals. We can just say um, we can use this function. So this function, wherever we write the number of the name of this function, is going to return a number to this place in our code. And so it's going to pass that number into how much Edward will go forward. And so let's have a maximum of 100. And then Felicity will call the delta function maximum of 100 as well. And then let's just see if we can run this or if we've got any problems with the max keyword. Oh, it's worked. There we go. So they've got different random amounts. It's worked straight away. Martin needs to join the party as well. Don't forget Martin. Um, Martin, we want you to move forward. Delta um, give you a, a higher chance, 200. Doesn't mean he will go further. <laughs> it's just, it's more likely that he'll go further. 
there we go, lovely. Um, it might be cool at the bottom to print the results of how much they went forward. So let's say, can I do this? Print ed, ed equals space plus um, Mm, how are we going to record this? I know. Oh, can I just say Edward position? I think I can do that. So we'll get Edward's position. And let's do that for all our turtles. So Ed, Bliss, and M Dog. And we want. Martin's position, and we want Felicity's position there. Does that work? We might have to convert these into strings, because these are going to be like a number, maybe as an array or a tuple. So a variable that holds, an immutable variable that holds like two or three components or more. Okay, so we cannot concatenate, that means join together a string and a tuple. On line 48 so yes so this is a string which we can print out but we can't concatenate it or join it together with a tuple object so first of all let's convert this to a string and that's very easy in Python I just write str and then wrap what I want to convert into a string with some brackets so so we're not getting confused let me just use some white space between those brackets. So Felicity's position, we also want as a string. I got the right amount of brackets, there we go. Martin, I want you to string. So that str keyword, all it does is convert whatever's in, in, in the middle of its brackets into a string. You know what? Let's just <laughs> let's close these up now. I don't like that anymore. <laughs> I want them like that. Okay, well that now work. Oh, bad input on line 49. I've probably missed a bracket. Yes, here. There we go. Try again. Brilliant. So they're all moving. Let's have a look at the console. Um, so Edward, minus 93, 100. Felicity, minus 90. She's a red one. Um, so that's ahead of um, Edward and M Dog minus eighty one sixty. So we don't need their Y positions. We just need their X positions really here. So to get that out of a tuple, after we get the position, we're going to put square brackets, and then we can index which one of these. Um, components in the tuple. So this is going to be index position 0, this is going to be index position 1. If we had another position it would be index 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. And programmers always start counting 0. So we want the 0, so that like the first um, index of our tuple. A tuple is just a variable that holds more than one value. So we want the first value. Does that now work? Oh, here they go. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. So we've got minus 48, minus 52, and 72. Um, can I do some maths here? It would be nice to just kind of not have the minus numbers and just kind of get how much they've gone. So what if I do 100 minus? 100 minus and 100 minus. Is that what I want? So Edward's gone 185, Felicity's gone 108, and M Dog has gone 195. So I want it the other way round. I want it the other way round. I want to say. that minus 100. OK, 
Okay, that, and that should give us kind of like the distance that they've gone. No. <laughs> oh yeah, because we're back to um, minus numbers now. Right, let's think this through. Think this through. They're starting, where are they starting? They're starting at minus 100. So we want to plus 100, first of all, 100 plus their position. Whoops. So that brings them back to naught. And then we kind of want their position minus 100. So Edward now is ahead. He's at 90. Felicity's at 9. And Emma says, oh, no, that's all we need. That's all we need. That's perfect. So it's now what I'm seeing on the screen, i.e. Edward being a, a long way ahead of Felicity. So he's at 90. She's at 9. That corresponds with... Uh, the readout that I'm getting here. Okay. Okay. Things are making sense. Um, can I, by the way, put those on different lines? Does Python like that? Just so that we can see our code. Let's try and run it again. Okay, it does. So I can just create a new line and the code runs in exactly the same way. And now Martin's 134. Lovely. That's brilliant. Okay, so we've got them moving. Um, we want to think about, yeah, like our game loop. So we want, it would be nice to have a key press to begin the race or a, a mouse click to begin the race. So to do that, um, let's put all of this into a function. So we'll say um, race. So we want a function called race that does this basically. And let's give Martin um, equal chance, move his to 100. So I'm gonna copy all of those and we'll make a new function, def race colon and then paste all of those there, just correct the line indent so that all of those three lines are inside this function to find the race. Um, now let's play, oh, we'll uh, just put a little comment here, print out positions. Hopefully everything should work exactly the same way. Fantastic. So all we've done is contain all of those um, all of those lines in a nice neat function called race. And actually, if we wanted another race, we could set them up again. Set them up and then have another race. Let's see how that works. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> so it had one race, then it repositioned them all, and then they have another race. And we only print out the final kind of positions. And notice that it kind of shuffled them down the screen again. So before we race, when we race, we kind of want to say that um, yeah, what we could do is make sure that cy, so I'm going to use global cy, cy current like y position equals 100. So we reset that position so they don't shuffle down the screen if we have lots and lots of races. Well, it's quite a nice feature though, kind of shows it's a new race. Okay, that's better. So they stay in the same y position. Okay, so that's been 15 minutes, right? <laughs> We haven't really probably got a, a proper game loop going. Um, yeah, so what I want to do, yeah, it was, a, it was a click. So now that I've got a function to race, I can only, maybe I could wait for a click. So I can say, um, what was our screen called? Our world. So world on click 
we want you to go to race. We want you to go and run race. Um, do I put brackets in there? Maybe I do. Right, and then to make sure we're listening to user events like clicking or pressing um, keys, we need to tell um, turtle the turtle module, which I'm using as T, calling T. I need T to listen. And that just means listen to any events that are happening. Okay, now let's try and run this. I believe there will be a bug because object has no attribute listen. Oh, is it world listen? Oh, because it's maybe the screen that I'm interacting with and clicking. Let's have a look. Yep, yeah, that's working. Oh, why did it run? It shouldn't have raced yet. I haven't clicked anything. How is it? What's happening here? What's going on? Let's just um, comment out that line and run that. Good. So they're not moving. I've just taken the brackets off. I've got a feeling here. It's kind of like a callback. If you use JavaScript, let's have a look. Okay, that's behaving as I'm expecting it to. Okay. Oh, I see how that's working. So if I put the brackets in there, so I'm, I'm calling that function whether we're clicking or not clicking. So this is a special call, like a callback to um, a function. If I'm not using the brackets, it means go and run that function only when this event happens, i.e. when the event listener detects that I'm clicking the screen. So let's try and click the screen this time. Nothing happens, but I do get an error. So it's trying to do something. So the race takes exactly zero arguments, but two have been given. So when you click on the screen, this event passes or tries to pass two um, parameters, two arguments into the function here. Can you guess what those two arguments are? That's to do with clicking. The arguments are the position of the mouse where you clicked. So it's used to, to like um, organize events on buttons and maybe to draw things to the screen or maybe make your turtle go to a certain position. Um, so we need to change our parameters in race. So we just need to say maybe mouse x my. I could call those whatever I like. I've just called them that so that I know what they mean. M x m y. I don't have to do anything with them. Now let's see if it runs. So we've set up. Once I click, click again. Yes, <laughs> it works. Okay. So it goes to run this race now. Now that it can accept two arguments. Once I click, I had to click twice just because the screen um, object, the world, is only waiting, is only listening, waiting for events once it comes into focus. And to get this into focus, you have to select it. Okay, so you have to kind of like click twice. Um, okay, it would be nice, I was just thinking later on, for users using this, we need like a message at the top to say, click screen twice to, to get the turtles to run a race. Oh, what if I click again? Oh, brilliant. They keep racing. So every time I click it, this is run. So what's not happening though is we're not resetting them. So we need to reset our turtles. So what I want to do in race, what I really want to happen is reset race. There we go, reset race. Um, so let's make a function that does that def reset race and then I want to do this basically organize the race so I'm going to take that out here 
and put it in here. So we go in set up Edward, set up Felicity, set up Martin. And because this setup function is here, it needs to exist in the code beforehand. So the setup function is higher up towards the top so that when I try to call setup, Python knows what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's just see what should happen down in the code. So we go and set up our turtles, and then on click, we go and race. So they're probably created in the middle and they don't actually move. So once we click twice, now they go and set up and they race. If I click again, they should go back to their positions and start again. That works. Click, they go back to the positions and we start again. Lovely. Okay, so we're getting something towards a game loop now. We can keep running our races. Um, I guess what we could do, we could, in terms of the game logic, we could either pick a random amount out of the maximum length they could go, but then I guess we'd have to keep doing that until one of the turtles gets to the end, or we could say they go all the way to the end, there's nothing random there, but we give them a random speed. Let's try that. So let's go to our race function. Here it is. So what are we doing? We are resetting the race. We're resetting the Y position. Oh, we should, we should make sure that happens actually before we reset the race. Uh, C Y equals one hundred. Let's just make sure that means everything's working. I didn't notice a bug. I think it was okay. That's cool. Right. So we reset the race. That means all the turtles. Where is the reset? That reset race. Oh look, we were able to reset the race, even though it's defined down here. Hmm, so I was lying about this setup function. Does that mean I can put this right at the top? And everything will still work fine. Save that. Run. And look at that, everything's working fine. So, ignore what I said earlier. Um, it looks like... The Python-like compiler um, looks at all the functions first, and it doesn't matter what order they're in or calling each other, that will be fine. But if you're going to call a function from, say, like the main part of your code, then you better be sure that that function has been defined ahead of time. Um, let's, yeah, let's just see if that's true. Let's put that up here. Oh no, that won't kind of work. No, right. Let's just, we'll stop that investigation there. Um, we're heading towards half an hour video. Um, yeah, what, what we want to do is, yeah, change the speed of our turtles. So we're back in race. We want you to move um, 100. No, what's the length of this? So they're at minus 100. So they want to move forward about 200. Let's move you forward. So just to test this, we're going to move Edward forward by 100. So 200. Felicity by 100 and Martin by 50, just to get our eye in. So maybe we we'll go a bit more, 250. Set them all to 250. Does this look like a good place to end the race? Yes, it does. Ooh, that's interesting. Felicity only went forward a small. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm still running the delta, the random function in here. I was really confused then. I thought I had hard coded them 250 steps. Let's just make sure that works. 
I'll have some more coffee. I've had too much coffee today. Very, very good. Okay, and they're a little close together. Oh, it's because I've made the um, kind of screen smaller. Let's move that back. Now they're a bit bigger. And put those down there. If I run it, yes. That's a little bit larger. Fantastic. Okay. So this time we want to change their speeds. So can we say Edward? Oh, we, will, we want them all to move at the same time. Oh, we've got to think of our logic because if I say Edward speed equals um, delta uh, 10 plus 1. So actually, if you put in speed 0, it means the turtles move instantaneously fast. But then 1 is slower than 2. 3 is faster than 2, 4 is faster than 3, and so on. I think 10 is the maximum. I think 10 is the maximum. Um, yes. So let's... Let's do that um, to all of them. So we're going to pick a random speed for Felicity and Martin as well, out of 10. And we're plusing 1, just so that if our delta function returns 0, it will always be incremented to 1. So let's just see what happens there. Setting up the race, exciting. So Edward's quite slow. Felicity's a lot faster than that, and Martin was even faster. To see what happens again. Mm. So we're definitely getting different speeds. So what we want to do is sort out our game logic. If we're calling Edward, you move forward, then Felicity, you move forward, and then Martin, you move forward, this whole thing is being completed uh, before we move on to the next turtle. So what we need to do is have some kind of loop going on where we move each turtle just one amount by their speed or something. Or I guess we could just move by a certain amount and then randomise it next time and then randomise it next time so each turtle is moving faster or slower throughout the loop. And we could go around maybe... Oh, we could just keep going around infinite times or indefinite times until one of our little turtle friends has crossed the finish line. So that's what I'll do for the next video. So we've yeah, we've done a lot of, of function work. We've got our turtles moving. We've got some mouse interactions. So we've done quite a lot in this half an hour or so. Thank you very much for watching the second video. Um, see you in the, the third video if you <laughs> if you choose to watch that. Goodbye.